हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू लेसन नंबर सिक्स दिस इज़ इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर एंड वी आर इन टू द सेवेंथ वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन वी आर करेंटली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट क्रॉप डाइवर्सिफिकेशन वी सॉ वॉट इज़ क्रॉप डाइवर्सिफिकेशन एंड वॉट आर द चैलेंजेस इन क्रॉप डाइवर्सिफिकेशन वॉट आर द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ क्रॉप क्रॉप डाइवर्सिफिकेशन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड यू नो इन दिस वीडियो विल सी वॉट आर द वेरियस पॉलिसी इनिशिएटिव और गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटिव various schemes and programs of the government uh, which promote crop diversification okay so there are some historical as well as some ongoing schemes of the central government uh, that is government of india that we are going to see so the one is national mission on sustainable agriculture nmsa uh, this uh, scheme or this mission is basically environment centric basically to protect the ecological balance that is the soil health water management climate resilience etc so that is the focus so that the agriculture becomes sustainable okay it includes rain fed area development program uh, rad uh, basically uh, you know promoting crops for different regions depending on the available irrigation available water source uh, soil health etc agroforestry via uh, pfm that is participatory forest management programs Uh, soil health card schemes organic value chain so see it includes so many different uh, schemes or programs of the government under this one mission basically the mo the motto is to have uh, or to promote sustainable agriculture in our country it also encourages crop mix and integrates horticulture or pulses into rotation so uh, crop mix meaning basically diversification of crops and integration of horticulture and pulses into rotation of this traditional rice and wheat then the next program is national food security mission that is nfsm expanded beyond cereals to cover pulses and oil seeds also encouraging farmers to diversify uh, staples supports cluster demonstrations uh, quality seeds and improved technology adoption for uh, you know uh, growing um, crops beyond cereals that is rice and paddy then the next one is pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana basically as we know that uh, you know many small and marginal farmers they uh, lack the confidence or they are risk averse to to diversify their crops because uh, if anything wrong happens so they will lose their entire livelihood so in order to give them a safety net uh, there is a fasal bima yojana by the central government uh, it offers insurance for um uh, you know cereals uh, pulses oil seeds and horticulture for various kinds of crops uh, basically it is a scheme where farmers contribute a very little amount say rupees 1 uh, you know per season that is per kharif season or rabi season the crop that they want to uh, insure uh, you know a very small amount is paid by the farmer and the and, and the rest of the um, uh, you know amount is paid uh, the the insurance Uh, amount is paid by the government under this yojana and if anything wrong happens uh, with the crop because of climatic reasons or other disasters then they are paid the insurance amount uh, recently the government has waived off this 1 rupee also so you know the farmers don't need to pay anything at all so it is completely free of cost fasal bima yojana it aims to stabilize income and reduce crop risk uh, key to uh, farmers confidence to diversify what are the challenges in this there are in this there are practical challenges claim delay so even if the farmers put their claims for crop losses there are delays in payments premium burdens so uh, but this has been waived off now and several uh, several states withdrawing example punjab is withdrawing from fasal bima yojana there are uh, you know political re reasons and uh, you know also the uh, some of the state governments think that this scheme is not very much useful for the farmers practically then the next one is pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana uh, this is to uh, to uh, to uh, increase the micro irrigation like drip irrigation uh, you know basically the motto is to increase crop yield per drop so more crop per drop more crop per drop so this is the motto includes integrated watershed management program whereby um, you know a given region that is watershed region is developed under this so uh, it is managed properly the available water resources so it in um, you know how to conserve water how to um, uh, you know how to make uh, assured irrigation for the farmers 
it enhances irrigation implements micro irrigation and watershed projects uh, boosting viability of water sensitive or diverse crops okay watershed projects include water conservation project rain water conserv harvesting projects uh, you know contour bunding so that to to arrest the uh, runoff of the water so they, they uh, you know then uh, then uh, uh, creating um, uh, new farm pond etc all these come under the watershed projects then the next one is national agroforestry project uh, uh, running from 2014 basically to promote uh, planting of trees along with agriculture encourages tree crop livestock systems integrating fruits or timber into farmland which increases the productivity as well as checks soil erosion you know retains more water in the soil so all these are the benefits now there are some uh, state uh, level or local initiatives also for example e rupee e r u p i uh, and specialty crop policies of uh, uttarakhand uh, brought in 2025 very recently so what it does is it's basically uh, it's a digital voucher uh, which streamlines subsidies for seeds and fertilizers uh, and four state uh, policies uh, focus on millet kiwi dragon fruit and apples to diversify cropping so this is the policy of uttarakhand government then the next one is the niranchal national watershed project again uh, you know this scheme was there from 2016 to 22 uh it is it was a world bank supported project um, you know uh, under the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana um, uh, for rain fed zones and uh, it improved watershed practices uh, which increase agricultural productivity and water availability okay so watershed wherever this word comes basically it is to make irrigation facilities to conserve water okay to make new farm ponds so these are the various things that are done under the watershed projects then there is another one mission kakatiya uh, uh, in telangana uh, basically under this project uh, 46000 uh, tanks farm ponds or tanks uh, were restored which increased the irrigated area and incomes by almost uh, 78% of the farmer so this is the information obtained from various sources so you can use these examples uh, in your answer writing if a question comes uh, as to different policy initiatives at local level then uh, what was the impact of national watershed project okay national watershed project this was a project uh, under the integrated water management program and what was the impact of this so it significantly boosted the productivity in water stressed regions by how by enhancing soil water retention through contour bunding afforestation recharge wells basically anything to in, to do water conservation okay to arrest the rain water to arrest the runoff uh, rain water harvesting uh, by doing contour bunding in mountainous regions afforestation planting trees um, uh, you know which checks soil erosion and also retains soil uh, ground water so it enhances soil water retention through all these practices uh then uh, raising crop intensity also so crop intensity meaning more crops could be grown on the same land we have so we have seen what is crop intensity um with farmers growing horticulture dairy fodder pulses moving beyond traditional drought crops okay because now irrigation is available at locally to them providing employment and livelihood diversification via integrated farming models apiculture fisheries agroforestry so these are the various things that were possible because of this watershed management project and studies have confirmed that watershed schemes significantly enhance crop yields livelihoods across rain fed areas okay rain fed meaning where irrigation facilities are traditionally not available meaning big uh, dams or canals uh, tube wells are not available small small uh, you know water conservation projects like farm ponds or uh, you know rain water harvesting structures they have increased crop yields and also ultimately the incomes and livelihood of the farmers then there are some complementary agricultural reforms also like e nam uh, electronic national Agri agriculture market apmc reforms uh, enable farmers to sell non traditional crops directly contract farming schemes promote horticulture oil seeds spices linked to corporate buyers so for example there is a corporate buyer and you know there is a farmer so what they will do is they will have a contract uh, signed between them uh, we'll see about contract farming in detail later so but very simply put there is a contract between the uh, you know this corporate buyer uh this corporate buyer and the farmer as per this contract the uh, you know the farmer will have to um grow such and such uh, crop and he, uh, he will have to uh, 
uh, and he will have to and he will be supplied with the inputs like seeds fertilizers etc by this corporate and in return the farmer will have to sell his produce at a fixed price uh, decided you know pre decided price to the same person to the same corporate buyer so that is basically the corporate uh, contract farming now here what happens here the farmer gets an assured income uh, input good quality inputs are also being supplied by the by the corporate so it is a good model but there are some uh, arguments which say that the farmers get um, uh, you know uh, negatively um, impacted because of such arrangement uh, because they have less bargaining power and these corporates may become more powerful and they may dominate the farmers in this case so that 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 we'll see later on um, Manrega convergence is also uh, done. Uh, it uses labor for watershed construction, bunding, afforestation. So, Manrega scheme is also used in rural areas in order to dig small, small farm ponds to do contour bunding projects, afforestation by the forest department. So, all these projects are also uh, done as a complementary uh, agricultural reforms. Then MFIs and uh, agri startups uh, is to support uh, MFIs are microfinance institutions uh, and agri startups to support small farmers in diversification. Example horticulture loans, digital extensions. So these services are also there. And under NAPCC, water efficiency, micro irrigation, and watershed approaches under the National Watershed Mission support crop diversification okay uh, NAPCC is National Action Plan on Climate Change so we know that the climate change is real global warming uh, because of the greenhouse effect global warming is happening and we have adopted this National Action Plan on Climate Change so basically we have to conserve water we have to protect our uh, existing resources so water efficiency needs to be improved micro irrigation needs to be promoted and watershed approaches meaning to conserve rain water to have small small irrigation projects like farm ponds and to arrest the runoff of rain water under national watershed mission support crop diversification so it also supports crop diversification and also increase the crop cropping intensity to summarize all this uh, we can say that irrigation and water management are are the foundational thing for crop diversification if there is no irrigation then people will not be able to grow more crops like right? right risk assurance like pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana and price support to incentive change to incentivize change again very very important because most of the farmers are small and marginal farmers and uh, you know they are risk covers so they cannot take risk because they are risking the entire livelihood digital reforms market access and reduce uh, risk right because if, if there is if there are digital reforms people get access to market like through enam portal so they can now sell their produce throughout the country anywhere there are buyers connected it's like an online flipkart or amazon where uh, farmers are the sellers and then there are purchasers so with, with digital reforms market access is possible risks are reduced also because you know if there is a government supported uh, platform uh, then you know farmers are more comfortable selling th their products on such platforms and convergence and regional targeting is very very important right uh, like Uttarakhand's policies to boost adoption of niche crops uh, so there needs to be some regional targeting it's not that one policy will fit uh, all the uh, all the regions or all the states of the country so there has to be regional targeting also okay so uh, uh, so this is about the uh, crop diversification uh, we'll continue indian agriculture in the next video thank you